Hi, this is Lisa with Creative Canines at Blogspot.com for Paper Mania for your July Copic tutorial. This is our review of what colors you're getting in the color kit this month, and we have some real workhorses in the kit this month, something that's going to really expand the versatility of the markers that you have. We're getting G02, C3, C5, BB17, BB13, E21, E53, and E57. Now, if you've been keeping up with the Copic Color Club um, each month, this is what your chart's going to look like. And let me zoom out here. Look how many faces you have filled in with Copic coloring goodness. And let me go over the different combinations we have here. I think the workhorse of this group truly is the E53 5150 color combination. Now you have those from your past. Uh, you can also put in E57 in that mix too. I use these for everything. Backgrounds, they're great for backgrounds. They're also fantastic for if you're trying to use anything that shows any kind of a um, aging if you're into the Tim Holtz things that Patty has in the store. Here's my E57, followed by my E53. Now the E53 57 is a tough blend. I'm not going to fib here. E53 is a tough blend with a lot of things. Now what you can do is that you can use either tip to tip color method or you can use the side of your marker and we can blend on the page here. I'm using that modified feather stroke. Now for me that's not blended enough still. I'm going to go ahead and use the tip to tip method and there's pretty much no colors you can't get involved here with tip to tip. I mean tip to tip method is really perfect for blending colors that are several different steps away from each other or that they just don't blend well. Some of these colors just have a whole lot of um, solvent in them and they tend to push the other colors away but tip to tip is a, a friendly kind of blending method. There we go. So much better. I'm going to add just a little bit more here. There we go. And you can tell already, I mean this would be great for anything that looks aged. And in your E51. Blending into that color there. And because there is a difference in solvent levels, I'm going to go ahead and do tip to tip with the E53 and just add just a little bit in there for blending. It's not going to ruin your tips of your markers. It's not going to hurt anything. It just it, it gives you a bigger palette of colors to work with and allows you to use colors together that you never thought were possible. It's my E50. And also this E50, E51 we use a lot in skin tones. And which takes me down to my next one. Now last month we used E50, E51, and E00, and we're using that in one of our lessons today, but we're also going to use it with the E21 combination, the E50, E00, and the E21. Now, I know probably no one here likes Twilight, right? Just kidding. I use this combination for Jacob for a darker skin tone. This E21 is perfect for that. If 
followed by my E double zero. And my E50. Now, if you want to use a highlight on this, like not highlight, but cheek color, cheek color for this is going to be different than our, our R20. The RV21 would look nice. On this, it needs to be a little bit deeper of a color. And you can tell these colors blend really nicely together and they're a very nice skin tone color. If you're looking for a really good um, basic blue green, the G's are just wonderful for it. And this is the G02 from this month, blended in with the G05. I seem to have lost my G05 someplace way away from home. There it is. <laughs> oh, I said, don't use me anymore today. You've worn me out. All right, here's my G05. Okay, good colors for grass, trees. Um, it's great around the holidays, great color for holidays. It's your typical, what people think of as a holiday green. G02. They blend really nicely together. Now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to use a different technique here. I'm going to use my colorless blender and add the color to my marker of the G02. So I get a little bit of a lighter color. Yeah. Go back over this with the light side color. My colorless marker was blender was very very juicy, so I had a little bit of an issue there. I just refilled it. Back in. Also add in one of the darker G's, like the G17 in. Um, and I'm tempted, I'm just gonna go ahead and show that to you. I didn't think at the time that it would be necessary, but I'm thinking now, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. As we color, we're gonna find things that work and things that don't work. If I need more of a differentiation in color, I may add a darker color in here. That's just the way the markers are. I mean, if that's why this color chart, remember I said the color chart's really important? And you know, my daughter gets a kick out of coloring it in when I get new markers. And that part's fun to see kind of your collection because you're like kind of collecting them. It's like, you know, getting all the, um, the cards in your baseball card collection. But what it also allows you to do is it allows you to see what colors will blend together. And I can very quickly look at my marker and see which ones blend together best for me. Cover this very lightly. 